emergency critical care veterinary specialist, I see cats coming into the ER all the time. How do you know when to get up in the middle of the night to bring your cat to the emergency vet? Here are some general guidelines on when you need to seek immediate veterinary attention. This list is by no means all-inclusive. Hiding in unusual places like the closet or under the bed. Difficulty breathing like panting, open mouth breathing, or a respiratory rate over 50 breaths per minute. My little hint, count the number of breaths in a 15 second period and multiply by four to get the total breaths per minute. Not moving or lying in one spot, crying out in pain, being acutely paralyzed, any trauma, any poisoning, excessive foaming or drooling at the mouth, any seizure activity, making multiple trips to the litter box with no urine coming out, especially if there's no urine at all in the litter box for more than 24 to 36 hours, straining to urinate or defecate in front of you or in unusual places, excessive grooming of the hind end with the penis sticking out, which may be due to a life-threatening feline urethral obstruction or urinary blockage, profuse vomiting more than six to 12 times in a 12 to 24 hour period, not eating for several days, lying near the water bowl and drinking excessively but still appearing dehydrated, and any string hanging out of any orifice. Please don't pull, leave all orifices to veterinary professionals. A top reason cats end up at the emergency vet is due to poisoning. Here are the top 10 toxicities for cats. One, poisonous plants. My most hated plant is the true lily. This includes plants from the Hemercalis or Lilium species, as little as two to three leaves, even the pollen or drinking the water from the vase can cause severe acute kidney injury. This type of plant is extremely dangerous, especially during Easter time, because a lot of cat owners don't know that that Easter lily is poisonous. Even if you think you put it out of reach, if the dried flower falls on the floor from the vase and your cat eats it, it can still result in acute kidney injury. Now I will say there's another common plant I see cats getting into, and that's called the insoluble calcium oxalate. This is plants such as dumb cane, philodendron, calla lily, or different types. And if your cat bites into the leaf, it causes intense burning or irritation to the mouth. And that's because there's microscopic crystals that cause a lot of irritation. Now this type of poisonous plant, you can manage at home. If your cat got into an insoluble calcium oxalate plant, just give them a little bit of milk or even some chicken broth to wash those crystals out of the mouth. The second poison I see are household cleaners. If you're cleaning your house, please make sure to lock your cat into the bedroom where they're not exposed to some of these chemicals. While these household cleaners are generally very safe, Keep in mind that cats have an altered liver metabolism. They can't metabolize certain drugs well. So what's safe for a human or even a dog can be metabolized inappropriately in a cat and result in secondary poisoning. So keep all household cleaners out of reach. The third poison are insecticides. I see cats being accidentally poisoned when a well-intentioned cat owner buys a dog flea and tick medication and puts it on their big cat. Unfortunately, certain chemicals called pyrethroids are very effective insecticides, but really dangerous to cats. These are used commonly in dog flea and tick medications, shampoos and sprays, but ideally should never be used on a cat because they can cause tremors and seizures and potentially be life-threatening. The fourth poison I see in cats are human medications. Certain antidepressants, one specifically called venlafaxine or Effexor, has some weird odor or smell in the capsule that makes cats want to seek it out and chew into it. When a cat chews into an antidepressant, it causes serotonin syndrome, and your cat can get really sedate or really, really agitated, and we can see a really elevated heart rate, blood pressure, and even tremors or seizures if your cat gets into it. Another common human medication is the prescription amphetamine. These are drugs like Ritalin or Concerta. They're ADD medications. They're drugs that can also result in a life-threatening elevation in the heart rate and blood pressure and rarely cause tremors and seizures also. 
The fifth poison I see cats getting into is liquid potpourri. Now this is more seasonal in the fall or towards the holidays, but this is when people plug in a potpourri pot and it's in a simmer pot, so the potpourri heats up. When a cat takes two or three licks out of it, it's actually really poisonous. Not only does it potentially cause corrosive burns in the mouth and esophagus, but it causes difficulty breathing and rarely can cause liver injury. So make sure not to use any type of liquid potpourri if you have cats. The sixth medication is a drug called a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, or an NSAID. These types of drugs are used in both humans, such as Advil or Aleve, or in veterinary medicine. Most of the time, cats do not tolerate NSAIDs at all. So never give an NSAID or any type of medication to your cat without consulting your veterinarian first. If your cat got into an NSAID, unfortunately, it causes severe gastric ulcers, so your cat may have profuse vomiting and vomiting of blood. It also results in severe, life-threatening acute kidney injury. So make sure to keep both human and veterinary NSAIDs out of reach of your cat. The seventh poison that I see is the drug acetaminophen, more commonly known as Tylenol. One Tylenol can kill a cat. So we always wanna keep this medication out of reach. Acetaminophen is really commonly found in any type of over-the-counter medication for colds or flus. And so a lot of people have this in the house. If they accidentally drop one Tylenol, again, it can result in severe poisoning in cats. Cats can't metabolize acetaminophen, so they end up having difficulty breathing, blue gums, a racing heart rate, and they can become really anemic from Tylenol. Rarely, it can actually cause liver failure. Thankfully, with Tylenol poisoning, there's actually an antidote. Your veterinarian will need to treat your cat with a drug called N-acetylcysteine, which can be life-saving, but you have to get to your emergency vet or vet right away for treatment. The eighth poison I see in cats are rodenticides. That's the fancy word for mouse and rat poison. During the fall or winter, people will start to place rodenticides around their house or yard so mice don't get in. Well, unfortunately, this can be poisonous to both dogs and cats. There are certain active ingredients in mouse and rat poisons. One, called bromethylin, can cause severe brain swelling or cerebral edema and result in tremors, walking drunk, and seizures in cats. And it only takes a tiny amount to poison a cat. The second type of rodenticide I see contains cholecalciferol, and this causes an elevated calcium that then mineralizes the kidneys and causes acute kidney injury. When in doubt, if you have any type of pet, you never want to have rodenticides in your house. The ninth poison that cats get into are glow jewelry and glow sticks. This is more commonly seen during the holidays or Halloween as part of costumes. And if your cat bites into the plastic, a poisonous bitter chemical leaks out. Now, thankfully with glow jewelry, you can manage this poisoning at home. You typically don't need to go to a veterinarian for this one, but the chemical is super bitter. So your cat's gonna foam and froth at the mouth. So it's important to flush that bitter taste or that bitter chemical out of their mouth. Offer them some milk or even some canned tuna water, even and some chicken broth, then turn off the lights and make sure your cat isn't glowing. If your cat is glowing, make sure to bathe it off appropriately with a liquid dish soap like Dawn, because otherwise, if it's on your cat's fur, your cat's gonna groom it off and become poisoned by it again. The 10th poison that cats get into are veterinary medications. Now as a veterinarian, I may be prescribing certain medications for your dog or cat, and it's safe at the dose that I prescribe it at, but if your cat gets into a larger amount or even the whole container, it can be dangerous. So what do I do if my cat is poisoned? First, please know there is nothing safe that you can give at home to induce vomiting in your cat. If it was a dog, that's a different story. There's certain types of products like hydrogen peroxide we can use in dogs to induce vomiting, but nothing safe at home. I do not want you giving hydrogen peroxide to a cat. Approximately 25% of cats that get it end up developing a severe hemorrhagic gastritis. They end up vomiting blood, and rarely it can be fatal. Instead, 
If your cat eats something poisonous, I want you to seek veterinary attention. At the veterinary clinic, we're gonna give something safer to induce vomiting. So please don't induce vomiting at home. Please get to a veterinarian right away. The next part of treatment for the poison cat is giving activated charcoal. This is something I'm gonna do as a veterinarian in my clinic. And this is a black liquid that's gonna bind up the poison from the stomach and intestinal tract. We have to be able to give it right away. So we wanna make sure that after we've induced vomiting, we've treated your cat and given this charcoal to bind up the poison. Remember with any type of poisoning, the sooner you identify the poisoning, the sooner you bring your cat in, the sooner we can treat it. You do not want to wait one to two days later once your cat has developed clinical signs because it may be too late. The poison's already set in. It's always less expensive and safer for your cat to seek immediate veterinary attention. If you think your cat has gotten into any poison, you always want to contact your vet, your emergency vet, or the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center for life-saving advice.